Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on reflection in mirrors. The topic of this video is object image relationships for concave mirrors. And we want to know, how do you describe the images of the objects produced by concave mirrors and how does that description vary with object location? I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I discussed the lost art of image description. You'll find a link to this video in the description section of this one if you need to review it. Lost, as used here, is a mnemonic for helping us remember how to describe the images of objects produced by curved mirrors. The L of lost stands for the location of the image. We describe it relative to major points along the principal axis. For instance, we might describe it as being beyond C, or between the focal point and the, and the mirror, or on the opposite side of the mirror. The O of law stands for the orientation of the image, whether it's been flipped upside down, in which case we describe it as inverted, or not flipped over, in which case we describe it as upright. The S of law stands for size, the relative size of the image relative to the object. We would use terms like magnified if the image is larger than the object, or reduced if the image is smaller, or the same size. The T of law stands for the image type. Image types can be real, or they can be virtual. We learned in our ray diagram video that the characteristics of images depend upon where you place the object. We're going to use the lost art of image description now to describe those images for several object locations. In the first situation, the object is located beyond the center of curvature. Using the loss model, we could say the location of the image, marked I in the diagram, is located between the center of curvature and the focal point. The orientation is inverted since the image is upside down while the object is right side up. The size of the image is reduced in size, meaning it's smaller than the object itself. And this is a real image type. We know that because we notice the reflected rays are converging at the image location. In this situation, the object is located at the center of curvature, which places the image exactly at the center of curvature as well. Its orientation is once more inverted. This time, the size is the same size as the object, and the type is real since the reflected light rays are converging at this image location. In this situation, the object is located between the center of curvature and the focal point. The location of the image is beyond the center of curvature, or past the C point. The orientation, once more, is inverted. The size is magnified, meaning larger than the object itself. And the type is real, since the reflected light rays converge at the image location. In this situation, the object is placed in front of the focal point, that is, between the focal point and the mirror. The image, for the first time, is on the opposite side of the mirror, and its orientation is upright. The size of this image is magnified, and it has a type of virtual. You'll notice that the reflected rays are actually diverging away from each other. We had to trace them backwards on the opposite side of the mirror in order for them to come together. That's how you know it's a virtual image. Virtual images are always located behind the mirror. This is an optics bench simulator that can be found on our website. You'll notice that there's two candles here. The larger one that's above the principal axis that my mouse is on is the object candle. The other candle is the image, a replica of that object produced by the convergence of those light rays. I'm going to take the object and slowly move it closer and closer to the mirror, and we'll use the lost art of image description to describe the images. As I drag it towards the center of curvature, two focal lengths from the mirror, you'll notice that the image is always located between the center of curvature and the focal point. It's always inverted, reduced in size, and real. When I finally get the object to the center of curvature, you'll notice that the image is also located at the center of curvature, still inverted, but now the same size as the object, and it's also real. Once the object gets inside of the center of curvature, less than two focal lengths from the mirror, we notice that the image is beyond the 2F point, or beyond the center of curvature. We notice that the image is magnified in size, it's still inverted, and it's still real. Now when I move that object to a position in front of the focal point, we notice for the first time 
that the image is behind the mirror. It's a magnified and upright image, and since the reflected rays are diverging after reflecting off the mirror, we can reason that this image is virtual. All behind the mirror images are virtual. So you notice as I drag the object closer and closer to the mirror, you'll notice the changes that take place in the image. It gets larger and larger and larger, still inverted and still real, until finally the object gets in front of the focal point, placing the image behind the mirror, upright and virtual. The table on this slide serves as somewhat of a cheat sheet that will help you remember how the lost characteristics of the images depend upon the object location. In the first row, the object's beyond C, and we notice that the image is located between C and F. It's inverted, reduced, and real. When the object has moved for forward to the center of curvature, the image is still inverted and real, but this time it's the same size as the object and located at the same location at the center of curvature. If we move the object in front of the center of curvature, yet beyond the focal point, the image is still inverted and real, but this time it's a magnified image located beyond the center of curvature. Finally, if we place the object between the focal point and the mirror, the image image shows up on the opposite side of the mirror. It's an upright, magnified, and virtual image. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are four resources that you can find on our website. You'll find links to each in the description section of this video. The top one is the optics bench simulator used in, this used in this presentation. The next three are very excellent resources that you can use to practice. Name that image or a concept builder or a Minds on Physics mission. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H and thank you for watching.